This interview is brought to you by www.employeeescapeplan.com. And if you want to have more customers pay you more money more often, Joe Nicasio is your man. I've worked with him personally. He's an amazing guy. Very grateful to have him in my life. And he's mentored me and coached me and just shared business wisdom, timeless principles with me to have me succeed, whether that was positioning myself in the marketplace, whether that was packaging myself up to be able to be a worthy choice or you know, just marketing myself, being able to promote myself and get the word out there. Joe Nicasio has really made a difference for me, so I just want to give you that heads up. And if you want to have a conversation with Joe, I highly recommend it. He'll buy you an hour of his time, www.employeeescapeplan.com. For the man of the hour, Elisha Israel is a writer, musician, lifelong creative, and serial entrepreneur with a focus on business development. Alicia is passionate about creating solutions for businesses in the digital realm and offers copywriting, Facebook advertising, programs, and consultations. With a balanced background in both organic and paid marketing, Alicia is known for direct marketing campaigns with a focus on results. Alicia, you ready to rock this? I am. Are you? Oh, my God. He said, am I? Am I ready to rock this? Ha! Ha! No, You've been going all day. You're definitely ready. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last interview, man. This is like running through the finish line times 10 with you. We're going to have a lot of fun, dude. I'm stoked. Same. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for hosting. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. My pleasure. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule to share this information with our audience and uh, just be of, of massive value and contribution and giving them some awesome strategies and practical application as well as just having fun in the conversation and, and trusting it goes where it's going to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. Sweet, sweet. Invitation. So we're going to get into your journey in just a second. Before we get there, I have a question that I ask all the guests who come on the show. And uh, you know, today's theme is about winning the game of life. And I'm curious, how has winning the game of life showed up for you? How has it made a difference? How has it affected or influenced your philosophy on life and how you show up? Sure. Uh, so the first thing that I'll say is uh, when we're talking about winning the game of life mm -hmm. is it all starts in your mind. Uh, you know, there's a great book that I'm reading right now called Mindset by Dr. Carol S. Dweck. Hmm. And it really um, showcases tons of different examples of growth versus fixed mindsets. Hmm. Um, and we're talking about starting at elementary level all the way up to CEOs and executives. Right. And so it's really, you know, winning the game of life is about being willing to, to grow, to learn, hmm. to be accountable for oneself to make mistakes yeah. and to do what you love. Because the fact of the matter is we only have so many opportunities to, to do what we love and why not start now? Mm. Yeah, dude, I love it, I love it. So it's an unlimited, limitless mindset and we can be, do and have anything that we desire. I know that's why we resonated, Alicia. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> so yeah, man. We're, gonna, we're gonna have a lot of fun here, man. So tell us more about what you do and how you do it these days. Sure. So I would say at my core, I'm a musician, but in my business nowadays, I'm a copywriter as well as a Facebook advertiser. Awesome. And so what I do is I work with clients to help them with their content strategy to help them get ready to move to the ad space. Mm -hmm. And then once we go to the ad space, we help them design campaigns that get them the exact results that they're looking for. Love it, dude. Very well articulated. I can tell you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Great job, man. So tell us more about like, what had you get to this point, you know, this point of, of uh, copywriting, of Facebook ads, marketing, digital agency, you know, what was that journey like? You mentioned music. So tell, take us back, you know, a couple of years or decades and tell us like sure. how you evolved into this person today and some of the challenges that you had to go through to get here. Sure. And I think, you know, it's great that you mentioned the challenges because mm. I think that's where a lot of people get, get caught up. So, mm. uh, you know, I'll start with like where my creative passion started was when I was maybe like 14, I was kind of angry at the world. And so instead mm. of yelling at people, I started yelling into a notebook. Yeah. And from there that evolved into slam poetry, which evolved into hip hop. So I was a hip hop MC for about five years and 
a lot of the people that I grew up around, they were jazz musicians or hip hop producers. Mm -hmm. And so after a few years of being a hip hop MC, I felt really stagnant because I didn't know how, I didn't really know music. I just knew how to talk. I knew how to rap, but uh, so I really wanted to start learning music. So I got into music production around that time. I also had found an artist named Tipper who was really influential for opening up my brain as to what is possible in the, in the music realm mm -hmm. and in the electronic composition realm. And so I kind of switched my focus. I, I was kind of getting burnt out being like a, you know, white Jewish guy from the Midwest. It didn't really make sense for me to be rapping, right. uh, at least within my own view of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I switched over to music composition at around the same time. I thought that it would be healthy to start learning the music business. Mm -hmm. So I started to do event coordination. Uh, I ended up doing that for about four to five years, which is where most of my organic marketing background comes from. Hmm. And so, uh, I, you know, I helped organize local, regional, national events, uh, both as an organizer, as well as a facilitator on site, volunteer staff, uh, as well as um, sharing my music at events all around the Midwest, Southeast, uh, uh, basically all up and down the East Coast and in the Midwest. Hmm. And then ended up building a national tour, um, which highlighted a ton of artists that I have a ton of respect for. And, and from there, I came out of that thinking that I was ready. This is where we get into the challenges. I was like, okay, I played original music every night and I opened every night and I played to an empty room, even though I built the whole tour and I did everything the right way. Like, you know, I highlighted tons of artists who were better than me. And I thought, okay, cool. Now I can ask for my booking fee. And I was like, okay, well, what do I need to do? I need to make $1,200 a month to, you know, have that ba bare minimum. Mm -hmm. That's four gigs a month at $300 plus travel. And then I started to shop that and I got a lot of no's <laughs> and I got a lot of people telling me I wasn't worth it. And, um, that was really challenging. And so, um, I kind of got mad. I got frustrated. And so at the time I was living in Asheville, North Carolina, I grew up in Michigan, but I had been in Asheville for a couple of years. And, you know, the minimum wage there uh, is 725. I probably would have been looking at something in like the nine to $12 an hour range if I went to the job market, mm -hmm. considering where my resume was at at the time. You know, I had worked in like restaurants and grocery stores, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to just chase some opportunity and uh, moved across the country to Oregon to do some seasonal work. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was talking with a mentor. I was kind of torn. You know, I had a little bit of money to live for a few months. And so I was torn. Do I want to, do I want to start my company or do I want to get a job? And this mentor said, don't trade your short-term goals for your long-term goals. Mm. Go start your company. Mm. And so we went through a whole process of my core values, my strengths, et cetera, identifying what it was that I was good at. And considering my background building brands with my own music project, as well as with the promotional channels that I had built, uh, it was it really made sense to offer an online brand management package, you know, social media management, website updates, you know, kind of content strategy, content development, um, administration, research, etc. Mm -hmm. So that was where my original offer was. And I did that for about six months. And um, I was watching a, a work a workshop and it was talking about value ladders. And so in the workshop, they said something about, you know, I had kind of been in the online space for a while and I kind of had come across the idea of, you know, I haven't read Tim Ferriss's four hour work week yet. I do need mm -hmm. to read that, but I had come across the idea of EAD eliminate, automate, delegate. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote out everything that I was doing for my clients in that first package. And so everything that, I didn't like, I just immediately crossed out. Right. And then everything that I did like, or well, everything that I did like stayed on there. And then I went through that list and I was like, okay, now what's of the highest value and mm -hmm. copywriting as you know, we know, and, and some of our audience might know is a pretty high value when it's done right. Yep. And then, you know, Facebook ads is, it's really a market of relative value. If you're able to work with the right clients and you're able to deliver them value, you can really, again, make that value proposition work. So those seem to be the two that really stood out to me. They were ones that I had really enjoyed, especially with my background as writing being my first love. Mm. And so I really started to niche down my company since then. And uh, it's 
honestly, it's opened up so much more opportunity, just having that clarity and like really s scaling down my focus has made me able to be of much greater service to people since, mm -hmm. because before I didn't really know who to talk to. And the second that I kind of narrowed my focus and started to niche down and mm -hmm. get really clear on what it was that I do, mm -hmm. I immediately knew how to communicate that. Mm. Wow. That's beautiful, man. Beautiful. So you started getting clear on your values on, on really what your genius was, where your time is most leveraged. And from there, like you started seeing the results because you stayed there, you know, versus getting distracted, trying to do it all. And you just stayed in your genius. Yes. Wow. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So how do people go about achieving the kinds of results that you've achieved uh on our on our end you know our audience like what what about your journey like what are some of the biggest lessons first off that you want to share with our audience about getting to where you are today sure and i'll i'm gonna do two things one i'll start with a uh, actionable piece of advice and the second thing i'll do is i'll share with a story that actually just happened awesome. which i think might be helpful and they actually play off each other really well so the most important thing that I got asked when I started my business, remember I said the, the conversation where don't trade your short-term goals for your long-term goals. Mm -hmm. the, that was followed up really quickly with what are your core values? Mm. And so I was you know, on the phone with, with my friend. We went through and wrote it down, and we wrote out all of the core values that I wanted to build my business on and that I wanted to, more importantly, that I wanted to, to design my life around. Mm. You know? I want to be able to, to have the financial freedom to support my family. I want to be able to, you know, as a musician, I want to be able to say yes to opportunities for gigs. Mm. So that means that, you know, the nine to five might not work because sometimes you won't be able to travel with that. You know, I wanted flexibility with my time. My time is incredibly important because whether it's building my business or composing music or teaching workshops or any of the other things that I do, mm. I wanted to make sure that I could have that creative space. Yeah. And as somebody who is a creative, it was really important to me. So really getting clear on what my core values are allowed me to start to design my life and my business around what was most important to me. Mm. And so now if we take that and we say, okay, well, how does that help this audience? I want to actually share the story that just happened. So uh, I have a friend who hit me up three days ago. And he said, uh, he's smart. He's skilled. He has, his experience is kind of like administration project management, although it was in the, like the regular job market. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't really recognize where he was, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he hits me up. He's like, Hey man, like my last job, like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for work right now and I don't really know what to do. And he was just kind of like, I don't know how to, how I'm going to pay rent. And, mm -hmm. So I was like, and this was pretty much all in Facebook Messenger. Towards the end, we hopped into a call. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, okay, cool. Well, what's important to you? Like, and we went through this process. What are your core values? What are your strengths? What are you excited about doing? And then I told him the story about how, when, remember how I said I went through that list mm -hmm. of everything that I like to do and didn't like to do? Yeah. And circled everything that was important to me. Him and I went through that process again. And we really focused on he really likes the project manager role or mm. the, the COO role, the chief operations officer role. Mm. And, you know, he really likes managing the back end of a business and making sure that everything is in place, which is an incredibly valuable role. Mm. And so we started talking about that and we got really clear on, you know, what exact role he wants to offer. We got really clear on from there. Uh, what he, who he wants to work with. Mm. And, you know, he actually was like, I don't really like, for me, he told me some examples of who he would want to work with, but it was much more about the um, perspective of the project than the actual like specific niche. Right. Um, he was a little bit flexible on that. And I actually was encouraging him to like choose like a specific niche, mm. but anyways, moving on. Cause this is a successful story. Mm -hmm. um, he did it. He did it his way. And that's a great thing. And so he, he had an interview the following day and um, he had the interview and then the next day he had a follow-up interview. And this morning I woke up to a message and he just closed a client at $4,000 per month. Wow. That's and he didn't know how to pay rent three days ago. That's incredible, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. you know, getting really clear and this is, this is the message here, getting really clear on 
what you do, who, what you're best at, what your strengths are, what is aligned with you, mm. what it is that you're willing to do and what you're excited about doing allows you to know what you bring to the table. Mm. Then getting really clear on who you serve, how you help them, what the benefit to them makes it so that you know where to look and so that you know how to communicate. Because a lot of what we did was figuring out how he could communicate, mm. you know, helping him with his, like, I help ideal client with benefit sentence mm -hmm. so that he can, you know, figuring out exactly how he could say that and, you know, just getting that clarity. So mm -hmm. um, I think I, I might kind of have rambled a little bit perfect, off the question, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Dude, I love it. So really the, the fact is get clear on who we are, what is our own zones of genius. And I love how you circle back to um, don't trade your, your short-term goals for your long-term goals, right? And and to elaborate on that and just expand upon that, it's really important. Um, whatever it is that, that we're going for in the long term, like don't sacrifice in the short term just to pay the rent, just to survive, just to do whatever because – if we step into that alignment of who we're really meant to be and we get clear on that, which is super important, clarity is so important. Um, when we're clear on that, like life will deliver to us miracles. Life will deliver to us like the perfect things for us to grow through or go through or rise up to or transcend whatever it is that we're dealing with. So I really love that, that you had a practical example of that. And dude, just congrats on, on being the type of leader, coach, mentor, friend who can uh, help produce results like that in people's lives, man. That's freaking epic. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And it was something that I was just so honored to have been involved and mm. I'm excited. You know, the, the part that was most exciting for me was mm. that like, he was like, we were talking about, cause there was a bit of the conversation was figuring out like salary negotiations and like how to price it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And he told me all he cared about was being able to like get a place where he didn't have a roommate. So him and his girlfriend could live together and, and mm. like be happy. Wow. And so like, you know, that's the part that makes me happy. Like now he gets to live his dream life wow. just by, and so like, whatever he's making money cool whatever he mm. like he's gonna do amazing work he's and he's like the person he's supporting supports tons of amazing other people it's amazing like the level mm. of impact and the tears of it but as a friend i'm just happy for him mm. <laughs> wow dude so beautiful so so beautiful man so alicia what else do you got for us man in these principles of of marketing of being location independent of you know what have, what have you noticed works because this is this is gold man super practical and i appreciate this conversation already it's really really great uh so the first thing that i would say is uh by the way it took me a second to get there but i just shared this out to my feed so awesome um sorry i was trying to find it in the beginning of the conversation but we dove in um uh, okay uh, principles of marketing. Uh, that's a great topic. Hmm. One, you have to know who you're talking to. Hmm. Uh, I mean, obviously, okay, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Sure. Um, we're going to make an assumption here and say that you have a validated product or service hmm. and I'll explain what that means. And then we'll go forward. So hmm. with a validated product or service, it means that you have something that is of value and you've already tested it in a controlled setting to make sure that it actually like is a you know that people actually want it right and so this is going through a process of market research customer research this means you know there's a a gentleman who i think his name is dane maxwell he has a thing called the foundation okay. um i was told this by one of my mentors who when he he recommends that when people start a business the first thing that they do is that is cold call their niche for two months not to sell no sales. It, like if you have the ability to do this, mm -hmm. just to learn the industry, to find wow. out, just get call them up. Hey, like what's going on? Where are your problems? Where are your stress points? What's mm. working? What's not? Yeah. Um, but but whether you do that full two month cold calling binge or you just go through a process of doing market research online forums, social mm. media, Facebook groups, Quora, uh, you know wherever you know just doing your research right it's really important for you to to know your product or service and then to to make sure that you validate it mm. by taking it through a process of market research knowing your competitors knowing 
the differentiation between yourself and the rest of the market. Mm -hmm. Differentiation is a really big point. A lot of people try to they try to sell on better than or cheaper than. Mm. And if you're selling cheaper than, that's a race to the bottom. If you're selling better than, that's a race to get one up. Mm. Um, if you're if you're focused on your differentiation, look, we have these services that just aren't on market. Mm. Or, or look, you know, in personal branding, differentiation is who you are. You just by being authentic to yourself, that's the differentiation. Yeah. Um, so you know that's really important. But then moving forward, once you've validated your product or service and you've gone through that process to make sure that there's actually market demand and that this is of service to the people that you want to sell to, mm -hmm. from there, it's really important to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of who your target audience actually is. Mm -hmm. And so you need to get really granular here. You need to figure it out. So um, for example, I, I my primary focus is in a specific niche. I'm going to hold off on saying it just because I'm still working on the case study. Okay. But uh, I know that these companies, there's a variant range of companies. So the small companies, they probably want appointments hmm. because they don't want to be calling because it's a business owner and maybe one sales guy. They don't want to be on the phone all the day. Right. They want to log into their Google Calendar and see appointments, mm -hmm. right? Now, that's great. It's also much longer and more expensive to get appointment campaigns. So with that in mind, I know that I want to offer lead generation, name, mm -hmm. phone number, and email. So for me, I immediately know that I want to look at mid to enterprise scale companies mm -hmm. that have a sales infrastructure, that have major sales teams in place, because for them, they want the name, contact, they want the contact information of every qualified prospect in their market mm -hmm. and they, so that they can call that list for the rest of the time that they're in business. Right. A list like that might be overwhelming to a small business. Mm -hmm. So that means by knowing my market, by knowing what I offer, by knowing what they need, I'm able to create an offer that's directly to them. Yeah. And so, you know, it's really important to get really granular and know exactly who your target audience is. Here's another example. I'm talking to like when I'm selling this, I'm talking to business owners and I'm talking to executives. Now, do I want to be talking about leads or do I want to be talking about acquisition costs? And like somebody who's listening will say, what, well, what's the difference? Hmm. But the fact of the matter is what one, what a small business owner might call leads an executive is going to call acquisition costs. Right. So as you know, your target audience, you're going to get an awareness of how to speak to them. Now that's just one example. Now, if I'm talking to um, if I'm talking to 50 year old, 35 to 50 year old moms who are looking for a weight loss program, and their big concern is whether or not they still look good, I'm going to want to find out what that language is, how mm. they how they talk about that. And you know, they're another big concern. They want to live healthy. They want to feel energized. Mm. They want to feel vibrant. They want to feel, uh, you know, they might even want to feel young. So. It's really important to, to go into, and this is where the market research comes into play. If you do it at the beginning, it's easy, especially if you do customer research to the point where you're able to speak in the exact language that your customers are using. Hmm. And you can do this by, by reviewing testimonials and copying and pasting phrases. You can do this by going to reviews or hmm. to forums and copying and pasting phrases. And so it's really important that when you get to know your target audience, you get to know them on a granular level so that you have a thorough understanding of exactly who these people are. A really important point that I've kind of referenced, but I haven't said clearly is speaking in their language. Mm. Um, and so you, and every single, every single industry, every single vertical has its specific language. Yeah. And if you like, it's one of the easiest ways to differentiate between an amateur and a pro is whether or not they know that niche's language. Mm. And so, that's something that really quickly will say, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about, or this person um, will be gender ambiguous. Mm -hmm. uh, this person knows what they're talking about, or this person doesn't know what they're talking about, is whether or not they use the industry standard language. And mm -hmm. if you haven't done your market research, it's a really quick way to show that you haven't done it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they, once you know your target audience, so like once you kind of know what your strengths are, and then you do the market research to know the market and the customer, and you know them thoroughly, 
And then you go ahead and you know who your target audience is and who you want to speak to. From there, creating your offer is easy mm. because you've already done all the back end. You already know what their needs, their desires, their pain points, their stress points, their um you know, their, their dreams, their aspirations, their commonalities, you know, all of that is pretty, pretty simple. And in fact, if you're doing this right, all you're going to have to do is copy and paste your language hmm. or their language into your messaging. Wow, dude, that is so awesome. And, <laughs> and I love it because it takes time and it also like deepens the whole experience. Like how committed are we to serving this group, these clients, this market segment is, is so, you know, like I think that's the, the shiny object syndrome that everybody is so afflicted by. If you just choose one, you first off, you analyze your, your genius, your values, who you want to work with, why you want to work with them. And then you fully commit and you invest that time to learning who they are, why you'd want to speak to them certain ways over the others, what, what the language is, where they hang out, why they, what the pain points are, you know, and like you're, mm-hmm. you're intimately connected with that and the lay of the land. It just gives you this level of um, certainty that you know what you're talking about too, which is huge in terms of deals, negotiating, all that kind of stuff. It's just like so powerful, man. This is gold. Yeah. And that level of certainty, it's something that, that is communicated subconsciously. And so Mm. when you don't have that background, when you don't know the industry, when you don't know the niche, Mm. you know, like for, for us in this conversation, we can just both kind of rapid fire out all of this language because we know it, we understand it, we live it. Yep somebody knew they could have you know it takes it, it like have you ever heard of do you know who alan watts is yes okay here's why i love alan watts <laughs> alan watts takes these concepts that have been in your head for your entire life mm. and he boils it down into this one sentence that you read on the page mm. and just completely blows your mind apart but there's it's so simple. It's so straightforward. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I love about, about what he does. And that's one of the signs of a true expert yes. is that they're able to explain with a sense of simplicity, oh, the most complex. Wow. Yeah. So how do we, how do we dive into that? How do we dive into simplifying the complex? Like, is there, is there anything you've found? You've, you've gone through a couple different industries and, and phases in your life. Like what have you noticed works and how do you get to that simplistic truth that you're able to even con, con um, convey to, to the audience in your copywriting? Cause like, I'm sure you have a focus on that. How do I keep this freaking simple so that a five-year-old can understand it? You know? I'm going to start with my word for 2018 and yes. that's process. Ooh. And, um, and then from there, it's just a thorough understanding of what it is that you're doing mm. and one leads into the other. Yeah. So when I say process, I mean, just doing, doing the work or, mm. you know, playing, playing the part or really showing up for yourself, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but just being really consistent and showing up every single day, and um, giving yourself the time and energy. This was why the short-term goal versus the long-term goal was so important. Because if I went and got a job for 40 hours a week, I wouldn't have been able to give myself my process. Hmm. I wouldn't have been able to give myself the gift of time. Wow. And uh, sure, I made less money than I would have on the job market those first few months. Hmm. Uh, But I had all the time in the world to learn, to discover to deep dive on my process, the process that I had fine tuned through, through writing, through music composition. And that was why I knew that I wasn't going to have much of a problem with business. I knew I had a lot to learn, but I had already been through it. I had already been through that learning experience just in different areas. Mm. Uh, But it's the same, it's the same brain. (laughs) Uh, And so uh, can you, can you, encapsulate the question again yeah so it was just um i'm trying to remember now (laughs) (laughs) it was a good one (laughs) um so i know we were talking about man i totally just blanking right now so we're talking about 
going through the the genius. We're talking about um, how do people know what to focus on? Uh, how do we dive deep into being an expert? Like, what does that take? How do we simplify that process of becoming an expert faster and being able to simplify our own stuff so that it impacts people at the deepest core level? Yeah. And so I'll, so the first part, just to, I want to say it out loud so that I get them segmented in my brain. The first part is establishing expertise. And then the second part is simplifying that for impact. Correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Establishing expertise. There aren't any shortcuts. Mm. There, there aren't, you just have to actually get good. Yeah. Um, and whatever it is, you know I mean? Like there are mm -hmm. countless experts in countless different niches and, but you, I, I deeply believe that people have to give themselves the gift of time to get good. Mm. And, you know, in today's society, that gift of time um, be can become challenging, especially when people are um, or trained or conditioned or um, living a life where they don't necessarily have the ability to, where they don't think they have the ability to choose their time. Right. And uh, it's something that over the years, I myself and a previous guest that tr drew me in, um, uh, Mitch Miller, I remember, uh, was where I first interacted with you cause I saw him doing an interview and, um, I know that he's really big on, on helping people break out of their, their mental traps and showing them just how much they can actually do. Uh, so it's really about giving yourself the gift of time to, to learn what it is that you're passionate about and to establish that expertise. And so that's, that's a really big one right there. And then for the second part, simplifying it so that you can have impact, it's, that's a really, again, it's a process. It's a process of, you know, identifying what are the key points yeah. and, and saying, um, you know, in copywriting, it's a really good idea to select a primary emotion that you want to communicate throughout the whole entire, mm. um, throughout the whole entire message. Right. Um, so that helps. Or it's saying, okay, well, look, I know that with this product, or let's say with this with this service, um, the the differentiation. Let's let's say a website. Mm -hmm. The differentiation that is, um, it looks great, it converts, and it's optimized for SEO. Mm -hmm. And so I know that when I'm when I'm communicating, I need to say um, the user experience is amazing. This website converts and gets you leads because it's optimized for SEO. And so when you have that clarity as to what those steps are, you're able to, to really break it down and, and be like, okay, well, these are what the talking points are. So in terms of simplifying something, it really starts with clarity. Again, it's in your own mind. If you're clear in your mind, you're able to communicate well. Hmm. If, and this is something that I've been learning and continue to learn, uh, which is that we we as people who are in this communications role mm -hmm. uh, have a responsibility of self-work mm -hmm. so that we can be the communicator and be able to um, not only communicate like, hey, look, here's all the information, but also do it in a way that can be interpreted, that can be mm -hmm. um, in a way that is mindful of the impact. You know, that's something when I was younger, I thought, as long as my intention was good, <laughs> it didn't matter how it was received. That was a hard learning experience. Yeah. It took me a second. Uh, but so really being mindful of the impact. And then from there, uh, just really boiling it down to those key points hmm. and just sticking to those talking points throughout. Yeah. Good wow. question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're great at answering them. <laughs> awesome. Thank I you. love it. I love it. So I'm curious, since you're you're doing digital marketing and uh, you do lots of research and I'm sure you're doing lots of training and keeping yourself up to date, um, how do you see things evolving moving forward? I'm curious on your kind of projections and uh, opinion of, of what in terms of the marketplace, in terms of marketing, copywriting, funnels, you know, just like what, what you're either excited about, what you anticipate, uh, anything like that that you can just share with us? Well, I think for people who are in the digital marketing space, mm -hmm. there's always going to be a new 
shiny object. There's always going to be a new process or mm -hmm. tool mm -hmm. to be used. But the fact of the matter is the fundamentals are exactly the same. They go mm -hmm. back to direct mail. I, if you've read Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins, that was published in 1923. Mm -hmm. And they were split testing ads then. <laughs> so, you know, the fact of the matter is the core fundamentals have been true for well over 100 years. Mm -hmm. It's just the vehicles that change. Yeah. And so if, if you are curious about digital marketing, if you're curious about marketing, if you're curious about advertising, if you're curious about growing your business, if you're curious about growing your revenue, study the fundamentals. Mm. Read scientific advertising. Read confessions of an advertising man. You know, mm. just read a lot. Right. Study what has been done before. And then go ahead and apply implement take action test things out because the fact of the matter is there's not that much of a difference between a chatbot sequence or a messenger marketing sequence mm -hmm. and a an email sequence except yeah. an email sequence you have a little bit more text to play with mm -hmm. whereas a chat or a messenger marketing sequence is more of a you know quick like few words here response few words here response mm -hmm. but the theory is the same you're still walking them from point a to point b yeah um, you're still like if your objective is to get people to schedule an appointment and if you're doing it through email, you're going to send them a link to an article. If you're doing it through messenger, like you're going to send them a, the first step of the sequence is, hey, check out this really informative article that will help you in your business. Mm. Step two, check out this really informative article that will help you in your business. Mm. Step three, check out this really informative article that will help you in your business. Step four. Oh, by the way, we're offering a free consultation. Click here to schedule. Mm. It's the same exact thing in messenger marketing. It's just a different vehicle. And so the, the fact of the matter is it's much more about having a lot of clarity on what the, the result is. So I'll walk, I'll walk us through this process and, and show you, because the key thing here is reverse engineering mm. from the ideal result. So let's say that you are selling a high ticket coaching program. So how do you sell a high ticket coaching program? Uh, if let's say it's $5,000 for, for a three month one-on-one -on -one high ticket coaching program. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do you sell that? Actually, like uh, in the, the nitty gritty of it, you get somebody on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. And you, or, you know, on a Skype call or a zoom call right. or et cetera, mm -hmm. but you, you get into a one-on-one -on -one situation where you're able to communicate them, figure out, like learn about them and, and then share the opportunity with them. Okay. So then, you know, that if your end goal is the sale, then the step before that is getting them into a call. Mm -hmm. Then you know from there, what's the step before that? Getting them into the call. Okay, now how do I get them into the call? Well, I know I'm going to have to nurture them towards that call. Okay, so then what's the entry point? Well, the entry point, let's say, is going to be, is going to be advertising. So we, we go ahead and, we, we, and then we're like, okay, so how do we get them from the ad where we first interact with them to the, the call. Okay, well, we have the ad and we give them some value and then we retarget them into something of value to them. And then we draw their contact information or maybe just their email and then we or maybe get them into a messenger marketing sequence. And then from there, we nurture, we nurture, we nurture. And then eventually um, we kind of get them into that call. And mm -hmm. then from there, we make the sale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are going to drop off along the way. But it's really, and that's the thing there, it's really about reverse engineering from the most ideal outcome. And mm. whether you're doing this as a marketing objective or as a sales objective, or you're doing this with your life, you're like, I want to be at point X. I want to have this, like, I want to live in an island in the Caribbean and have a mansion. This is not true. I, this I, island, not something I want. I'm Start writing this with, down wait. so I can hold you accountable, Alicia. No, I don't want to live on an <laughs> island in the Caribbean. I'll be completely honest. I might go visit, but it's not something like the storms are way too crazy there. I just have to pay to fix my house every two years. So, <laughs> um, but let's say theoretically, like if somebody wanted to live on an island in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and they wanted to, you know, like they wanted to have a mansion and they wanted to have a sports car. So they, if, if that was what they wanted to do, you take the same exact process. You identify what that end result is, and then you reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what do I need to do to live on an island in the Caribbean? What do I need to do to get a mansion? What do I need to do? Or, you know, whether it's in relationships. If, mm -hmm. you're, if I want to get better at um, communicating, okay, well, then what do I need to do to do that? Maybe I need to take a course. Maybe I need to talk to more people. 
okay, what if you want to get better? What if you want to get stronger? What do I need? What if you want to get into better shape? What is that end goal? Okay, you want to lose 10 pounds? Okay, now from there, you can set that goal and reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. In my business, one of my current goals and uh, is to, to get my business to 10K a month. Mm -hmm. And so, which for some people watching might not be too much, uh, but you know, for me, it's, you know, considering where I'm at in my business, um, I'm actually pretty close. And, but how did I get there? Like, how, how am I going to get there? It was through setting that goal and then saying, okay, well then I'm going to reverse engineer my offers to design it so that I can get to that point. Mm -hmm. And so you can use this process in your marketing, in your life design, just the process of identifying an objective, an ideal outcome, a goal, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and then reverse engineering it step by step by step until you get to exactly where you are. And since you've reverse engineered from that point, you already know what your next step is. And all you have to do is follow the process. It's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so I'm just going to shout out to everyone. Uh, Alicia, you are brilliant and your mind is very strategic. And uh, if I've people need teachers. help with reverse engineering, they will definitely come to you because like I can tell you, you just get it, man. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer. You know, I have my degree in electrical engineering. So cool. I totally acknowledge you as someone who's actually implementing and, and living the mindset of an engineer and, and someone who's really brilliant. So I'm, I'm excited you, to That's see true. like what you create in the future with all your gifts and talents and abilities, man. You're a rock star. Thank you, man. It's yeah. actually funny. I, uh, I dropped out of community college. I just was at, at the time, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And it just felt like a waste of money. Right. But for quite a long time, I've known that if I were to go back to get an undergrad degree, it would be electrical engineering. So that's funny. Wow. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but then I found out that you don't even need an undergrad to get a master's. So I think I'm just going to go right for that. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even know that. <laughs> right? I, was, I was like, what? <laughs> well, you know, the reason like the the reason why um I would Depends go back and school, get but yeah, what was sorry. It? Depends on the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why I would um go back to get a, a master's would be to like practice, get hands on, the networking, the professors, and like get get experience. I believe that if I find the right mentor, that will fast track me so much quicker than any degree, right? And to say yeah. that I've worked with such and such mentor to have built something alongside mentor and put that on my resume and like have that the accolades for that the achievement the the results from that like that's that's really what i'm excited about achieving more than any any degree you know i, I went through the degree game bachelor's and i got it and i'm like yeah you know not didn't really do it for me although i love the foundation it gave me i love the thinking process and i'm excited to dive deeper into electric like electricity and science and biology and how do we mix the two how do we you know create epic human beings superhumans and stuff with like bioengineering and technology yeah. and amplifying our chakras and all kinds of amazing <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> yeah. yeah and there's really there was really amazing work happening in the bioengineering space especially with nanotechnology dude it's huge huge yeah. i excited. don't know nearly as much about that as i would like yeah, no, right? It's like, I just, I know it's a possibility and I'm excited about it and <laughs> still a kind of a cloud. <laughs> so, dude, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, man, I think uh, the future future is looking very, very bright for, for all of us and there's lots of opportunity. So what else do we need to know about marketing principles? Uh, anything else that you've seen being demonstrated? Any other you know, like, aha, that hit you over the head over the last, you know, six months to a year that really made a difference for you? Specificity. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can't talk to every, like, if you're talking to everybody, you're not talking to anybody. Mm. Uh, and that was really big. My first, I think I touched on it, my first six to eight months in my business, I didn't, like, I was offering that, like, online brand management package, and I got maybe two clients from it. Mm. Um, and... I had no idea how to communicate it because yeah. I didn't know what I was offering. Because like, what value? Like on like a, a real level, what value does social media posts and website updates have? <laughs> like, like does does that affect revenue? Does that affect? Right. Does that drive results? Does that accomplish what it is that people want? Hmm. And then I focused in on copywriting and Facebook ads, and then I got a lead generation client, and then from there I realized that like lead generation is incredibly powerful, and that it was a lot of fun. 
And then my process really, like the way my brain works, really leads me well towards split testing, which means yeah. once the campaign starts, I can actually slash that cost way down for my clients. Wow. I was like, oh, wow, cool. Well, this is really cool, powerful stuff. Yeah. And so from there, I started to, to focus on specializing in, on lead generation mm -hmm. and helping people with strategies in that realm. And I mean, since then, it's it's grown quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so the specificity has really helped um, and just narrowing my focus more and more and more uh, has actually meant that I can be of greater service to a lot more people. Dude, that's huge. Um, so we hear the benefit of specificity. You know, you can serve more people. You stay in your genius zone. Um, tell us a little bit more about the cost of lacking specificity. Time, hmm. really. Um, I mean, I spent like, I mean, granted, like my first six months in business was just a lot of learning. Um, and I'm really grateful to a lot of people in the online space. A lot of the people in the Facebook groups environment, I, I learned a ton. Um, but I also, when I didn't have that clarity, I mean, I didn't know what it was that I was offering. I didn't know how I was helping people. I, you know, I was focused on the, the features and not on the benefits. Mm. Um, we, you'll hear, sometimes you'll hear marketers say, focus on the benefits, not the features. And so that, that's the thing. I was focused on, hey, I'll you know, manage X, Y, and Z accounts for you, and I'll mm. do this, that, and the other thing for you, and I'll you know, help you with your back-end administration or whatever it was that I was offering mm. at the time. Mm. And the fact of the matter is, it didn't actually like have that relative value there. Mm. And so it made it hard to sell because yeah. I didn't know what it was that I was actually offering. And so that, that just slowed everything way down. Mm. And so the cool thing is I went through it and now I can help other people the same way that with my friend, with my friend the other day, mm. when we went into that conversation within three days of us diving into a process, he was able to land a 4k client. Mm. 4k per month yeah dude that's and freaking so, awesome yeah so you know that's really the the thing that i'm really excited about because um when you when you go through the process a couple of times hmm. you're able to really start to to know what works and what doesn't work and mm. you're able to to really start to be able to help people wow dude that's it, man. That's it. Go through that process, figure out those genius zones, and uh, just do do what works. Test and learn. You know, Let, learning along the way. Just this commitment to growth, to never ending growth. To you know, being our best, our greatest possible selves, our best self. Um, so huge, man. So huge. So, I want to hear: Is there any other um, really big lessons or wisdom that you've picked up along your years? Well, I'd like to be, to reflect on what you just said about the doing one's best. Yeah. Um, and I think, and actually that triggered another part of my brain. So great. Okay. Um, uh, so I think it's really important for people to, to make the commitment to do one's best in each moment. Hmm. That doesn't mean be perfect. That doesn't mean that everything's always going to work. Right. It just means showing up for yourself. And, and saying, well, if I'm going to start this process, I'm going to do my best. Mm. And that comes, my dad taught me that. He was like, don't, you know, don't start something unless you're going to finish it. And yeah. like, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, don't, don't half-ass it. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't do it halfway. But, uh, and so he, he definitely was, has been an amazing influence on me. And, mm. um, so that, that's a really, a really big one. And I think the next thing would be, um, Make decisions. Hmm. I think that one's really, really powerful. Um, wow. And it takes a while for people to get comfortable and to learn how to trust themselves to be able to make decisions quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, what is it? There's like the saying, don't make goals, make plans. Mm. <laughs> um, or like, you know, like, I, I don't know. I have tabs open for things that I've been looking at for days. I'm never going to do anything. I mean, not never. There's like one or two that I'm curious about. But mm -hmm. it's likely that I'm probably not going to, you know, make an investment on that, that on a program or, you know, 
just I don't know. There's like this new platform that I was looking at, and mm -hmm. you know, eventually I'll get to it um, and you know build out my profile on it. But the fact of the matter is, hey, it's really about making decisions. Here's an example. I was sitting today, and I was sitting there. Um, I had maybe like a I was waiting for a webinar. Jay Abraham had a webinar, and so I opted in for that one. Nice. And um, that was actually right before this. And nice. um, he, so I, I had like a half hour to of downtime. I was just like, I have this whole list of like narratives for one of my niches that I want to like write and publish for LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I was just like sitting there and I was like, oh, I could be lazy or I can just, you know, write one of these narratives out. And then 10 minutes later, I had the whole thing written out. And it was wow. in fact like three minutes later, because the way that I write is I, I make outlines totally. and then I turn it into sentences. Totally. And so it's like, it's really easy because all I have to do is just get the points out of my head. Mm -hmm. And then from there, like, all I have to do is write some filler words. Framework, filler framework, words. framework, framework, framework. Uh, okay, that framework makes sense. Fill it right. in. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And so within minutes, I had the entire framework in place. And then I just had to, like, write it. And by the time that the, the, the webinar had actually started, I had already had it peer-reviewed wow. and published. Wow. <laughs> and it was like... So it's really about like make those decisions, mm. um, you know, jump in, dive in, get started and make the decision and invest in yourself. I guess that's the last part is invest in yourself. Like we and and I'm going to step back and talk about our society for a little bit. We as a society um, are trained to externally validate mm. um, whether it's, you know, getting the person to say yes to you for the date or whether it's being the best person on the team in school or whether it's getting the good grades, um, we, we get taught to validate ourselves based upon external influences. Mm. And oftentimes that leads to situations where people, when they are by themselves, mm. when they are on their own, um, they become panicked, they become anxious, they become unsure. Um, and, so I, you know, I really would encourage anybody who's listening to, to really dive into a process and to learn how to internally validate. This is why I'm so deeply cr grateful for my creativity and at finding it at a younger age is because when I was, when I was feeling down, I wrote, mm. I, I made music. Um, I would, you know, now like it's, you know, I work, I, I, I put my, my mind into something that, that benefits me. And mm. I'm not like by nature, I am not a hardworking person by nature. I am not a confident person. Mm. Um, I'm not, I don't think of myself as particularly, I mean, I recognize that I'm smart, but I don't think that like, I'm, I don't think that I'm that much smarter. Um, and, uh the the fact of the matter is it's all been a process of stacking growth mm. um just one on top of another on top of another in every single area of my life has been a continuing process of development and you know at the beginning the one of the first things that i said here was talking about carol s dweck her book mindset mm. and how it talks about fixed mindset and growth mindset mm. and um, i think that's a good way to to close the loop because people with a fixed mindset they see their level of intelligence as static. They're always going to be this smart. They're mm -hmm. always going to know these things. So when they face obstacles, whether it's in school, whether it's in work, whether it's in their personal life, if they fail, if they don't succeed, it's a reflection on who they are because they don't have the capacity to change. Mm -hmm. Now, people with the growth mindset, for them, they see it as an opportunity. They see it as an opportunity to learn to discover, to explore, to expand. Uh, there's a, there's a, a guy named uh, Dale who's, who's on the internet uh, who he, he's pretty highly successful and he has this great line. He says, there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really essential um, to uh, one, to, Give yourself the gift of time to invest in yourself, to make the decision to prioritize yourself, to learn to internally validate, mm. um, to to find a sense of self-worth from yourself, mm. whether it's doing push-ups or whether it's meditation 
or doing work that you love or writing in a page or playing the guitar or writing a song or going for a walk or drinking tea, whatever it is that it is for you, mm-hmm. honor yourself. Give that to yourself. Invest in yourself. Um, dream massive. And then reverse engineer so that you know exactly what your next steps are so that you can accomplish those goals, those outcomes, and make those plans, make the decision, invest in yourself, and grow and bloom and allow yourself to be like a flower where it doesn't necessarily think anymore. Hmm. It simply grows and blooms. Man, what a way to (laughs) drop the mic! Ah! (laughs) <laughs> As I said, I write a bit too. I, I write a little bit, so I have a flair for occasionally turning a dramatic phrase. <laughs> Rhetoric, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, Alicia, how do people stay connected with you, man? Uh, sure. So, if you'd like to give me an ad on social media, I'm a bit slow at getting through my friend requests, but I, I'll definitely uh, give it a, a fair look. Uh, I definitely have a couple criteria, so make sure that you have a picture of yourself. Make sure it's pretty clear on what it is and who you what you do. Um, otherwise you, I'm, but you know, hopefully if you pass those, then I'll definitely, um, <laughs> accept you and send you a message and be like, what's up? What do you do? What do you focus on nowadays? You're not doing those. You need to step up your social game. My goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, that's one thing. Um, I have my business AI digital suite. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can go to the website and there are ways you're able to schedule a 30 minute discovery call there. And I also have a program for dedicated creatives that is going to be um, that I'm in the process. I'm, I'm doing like a private beta thing where I'm reaching out to people in my community right now. And then I'll be doing a public launch in March. So if you're curious, if you identify as a dedicated creative and you're looking to to join a group for a four week program, feel free to reach out to me and I would love to help you um, join that and see if we can help you get some of your identify and validate some of your business ideas and get actionable go-to-market strategies while we're at it legit awesome (laughs) alicia you're the man thank you so much for coming on today it was just a a blessed conversation man and i know everyone who is listening just got massive value out of it and it's those fundamentals and just how certain you are with your your precision with your thinking with your research and what you've already practiced and demonstrated it's amazing man and you're a gift to everyone who has you in their life seriously Thank you. Can I, one last thing, can I? Please. Um, Most people breathe to the bottom of their lungs. Like right, here, let me sit up for me. To like right over here. Um, I would encourage people to practice breathing to the bottom of their stomach. Mm. Um, It's incredibly important and um, may do wonders for yourself, for your existence and your mind. And, um, I'd encourage you to create some space. And if you're just standing around bored, feel free to take a deep breath. Mm. Dude, so beautiful. I love it. True words have never been spoken. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, man. Good, 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 good stuff. Everyone, listen to Alicia. Follow the man. Get on his radar because he's he's doing big things. I can feel it, man. I'm excited to see Thank your you, journey. Bro. Chris, thank you so much for hosting. And um, it's been an absolute honor hanging out with you. Absolutely, brother. Just the beginning, baby. (laughs) See you soon, man. All right. We'll see you soon.